The Tourism Business Council of South Africa joined forces with Gauteng Tourism to host the South African Travel and Tourism Summit. This summit was aimed at creating a platform for debate and dialogue across the total value chain of the tourism economy. One of the foremost tourism industry experts in Namibia is Jackie Asheke. She's the managing director of her own consulting firm, AE Tourism Consulting, and she joins me now at the desk. Jackie, thank you so much for coming through to Beyond Markets. I understand that you've just closed the last session of this two-day conference. What did you take away over the deliberations over the last two days? I think that what we took away from this particular conference, which is notable, is that we did a to-do list. A lot of right. times you go to conferences and it's listing, okay, this is the problem and this is the issue, and it's the same thing, talking heads, you know? This one is great because we said, okay, we already know that's the problem. Mm -hmm. What action? are we taking? So the session I just closed was one where we said, okay, this is the problem, who's going to take care of it? Who? Who? And on what timeline? I understand that if we look at the delegates, we it was not just South African focus as you are here uh, representing Namibia, but there were also other international and continental mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile a to-do list or did you focus on uh, individual per country uh, challenges? Now we stuck to the South African uh, to-do list and what needs to be done here, but right. we used our models. For example, there was a group from Melbourne in Australia yeah. that was really telling. Some of our products are similar. So we we're able to say, look, we did this in Melbourne, or we do this in Windhoek, or we did this uh, in different uh, parts of the, of the world and of different parts of South Africa. Hey, Kauteng, hey, South Africa, let's look at our problems this way as a benchmark, perhaps. What does South Africa stand to gain from the Namibian model? What we stand to gain is from is mutual, how can I say, symbiosis, I right. guess. We right. get to, to, to feed off of each other. Um, of course, outbound tourism from South Africa is a big part of inbound to Namibia. Right. About 300,000 South Africans have a good time in Namibia every single year. So that means good bucks for us and a lot of jobs. Likewise, South Africa being obviously the transportation hub for the static region, yeah. a lot of, if you're going to talk about tourism through you know China, or some of those other markets and also from the European markets we have Air Namibia surely with a linkage to Frankfurt of course yeah. but as many bums on airline seats that you can get flying in via the beautiful hub in Joburg means again jobs in Namibia so therefore what happens uh, in South Africa with the airlines companies there with SAA it really impacts the Namibian economy of course, it sounds like a lot of the discussions also hindered on collaboration. Uh, and in this particular instance, it would be an opportunity to collaborate on a regional front. Mm -hmm. Were there any key projects that were identified as uh, low-hanging fruit mm -hmm. that, that can be picked for South Africa and Namibia? Yeah, mainly the issue of, again, go back to the transport hub. Right. Uh, let's say South Africa has something like a transit visa. Mm -hmm. Or let's say South Africa has, well, any hunters because a big part of our tourism is hunting. Any hunters coming through South Africa, you gotta get a South African gun license. And so this is a barrier, you see. Right. So we are able, that's low hanging fruit. Once yeah. they hear from us that look, you know, if you're giving transit visas to people coming to our countries for tourism, that's adding on to the hassle factor, as well as the cost factor to come for tourism to our countries. Is Do you really need to, to do that, can we lower that barrier? Mm -hmm. And South Africa is saying, hey, we didn't even know that was damaging you in that way. Right. So they're open to that through bilateral uh, discussions between our governments, yeah. but also when private sector brings that issue, they say, whoa, we didn't know that. And then they adjust that. that that's what these conferences bring out. Let's look at the Namibian tourism sector in particular. Uh, like many uh, uh, tourism sectors on the continent, was hit quite hard uh, by the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing that uh, change now as uh, economic winds of change are mm -hmm. also coming mm -hmm. along. Where are the opportunities for investors who might want to get in on the Namibian tourism front? Well, we actually didn't get hit by the snowplow of the global economic crisis in the way a lot of markets did. In fact, Sub-Saharan Africa didn't get hit the way everybody else did. The World Travel and Tourism Council did a study uh, between 2008 and 2010. Everybody around the world was double digit down in, right. terms, in terms of tourism receipts. Sub-Saharan Africa was 5% up. Right. So we, whereas we didn't meet our targets of seven percent, ten percent growth, it was still significantly we, higher. We didn't 
go under the under the water, and this was very very uh, important to us. So, in terms of investment in, in Namibia for our tourism product, we a lot of people want to come into the hotel. They want to come into the accommodation sector. We rather look at um, let's look at something like activities. Nobody comes on holiday to sleep in a hotel. You could have the, so I'm going to come from Holland. What I'm going to do? I'm going to sleep in this great room. Right. And then I'm going to get on the plane and go back home. No. <laughs> it's the activities that draw the people. So we're looking at innovative people who are looking for sandboarding businesses and, and using the, our vast, wide open spaces in Namibia and creating innovative uh, businesses like a tethered balloon that goes up over the desert so that people can go up. I don't know about the going up thing for me, okay? I don't know about that. <laughs> that but makes two of us, right? <laughs> but it's a good one, and people love it. Right. Let's, let's perhaps also look at this experience that, that, that you, you're um, describing to me. What is Namibia doing to differentiate itself as one of the leading markets in Africa when it comes to destination marketing? We, number one, tell people that we are niche. We are not mass tourism. In fact, we, we, we are delicate in terms of our conservation and our in, in our um, environment. Right. So we are not looking for you know the whole uh, Honolulu. If you go to the beaches of Hawaii, I mean people are laid out like sausages one next to the other. We are not into the sausage uh, frying business like that. Right. We are more into the discerning traveler who wants a value for money, high impact adventure tourism experience. We sell experiences, not just our destination. Right. And, and where do you see the future of the tourism sector in Namibia? Is it set for growth or are you having to take on some challenges? We take on some challenges as, as do uh, other countries in our region too. Challenges with its location straight away. Right. It is expensive to get to this region. You're going to have 60% of the person's travel budget eaten up right away just in the airline ticket. Right. And with aviation fuel doing what it's doing and some of the European governments coming with their their little uh, levies for this or that or the other. Cost of flying here is really uh, giving us a kick in the butt. But we are going to overcome that with drawing people in for the experience. Jackie, you've been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond.